Okay, hi again. And to give you additional help on the on the module on law, because I know it can be quite difficult, I've put to get together this extra presentation, PDF presentation. And uh, you'll see questions at, at the end that are the same as the self-test questions uh, in most books, even though the, the additions and years from books to books, they can change a little bit, but what you need to know will be on those questions at the end. Okay, so the objectives are to understand more about um, a few diff definitions of law, maybe civil law, criminal law, do you know the difference? Um, what are the different courts in Ireland? Who are the people involved? Um, and Garda Shia Khanna, who are they? And what's the story of the prison uh, system in Ireland? Um, what are war crimes? I'll we'll tell you war crimes, we didn't deal with them in the last one, are, are basically crimes against human beings around the world. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of problems in the world and there's, there's a, a different uh, refugee crisis and, and different uh, locust problems in Africa at the moment where they're saying six dozen um, countries at least are gonna suffer uh, severely um, economically and health-wise given this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Um, got children's law, which we dealt with a bit in the last presentation, and consumer law that we'll go into in a little bit more detail. Okay, fine, here we go. So, first, I'm showing you here a visual of courts in Ireland. Yeah, that's the Supreme Court. Uh, as you can see, you have the judge usually in the center of operations. Um, and here on the right, if you ever go to Dublin City and you're along the Keys, that picture on the right is the four courts in Dublin, uh, which is one of the most famous courts in Ireland. Well, the most famous, given its association with the 1960 rising as well, uh, which is a, a different story. Okay, we leave that one to your history teacher. So, law and rules explained. So, law is a rule for society that if we break the law, there are punishments. Whereas the rule's a bit different, it's just a statement or it's telling people how they should behave. But uh, you don't get fined or thrown in prison if you don't obey rules. Um, but uh, there are consequences with rules. So if you, if you go faster than 100 kilometers per hour on the M50 in Dublin, um, you're breaking the law and you can get fined. In other words, you have to pay money and you also get penalty, penalty points on your license. Um, whereas a, a good example of a rule would be say, just rule that you have to stay silent in libraries so that everyone can concentrate for the benefit of everyone. Um, you don't get a fine, you don't put, put in jail if, uh, if you break this rule, but uh, you can be put out of the library and not welcome back. Um, so there's the difference between law, laws and rules. So hopefully uh, that helps you understand. Okay, so moving on. Uh, law, how, why, when, where, and what are the types of law? So laws were passed down by British kings originally and different kings around, around the globe and then judges and written down then as common law for future, for, for future use. So you'll see that our law will have some similarities to the British system. Um, won't be exactly the same, but there's, there's overlapping things. Um, as you know, we used to be ruled by Britain for certain times in our history. Um, and yeah, certain things were, 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 were brought uh, from, from the from the British, certain things were brought from the Vikings, etc., etc. Okay, so laws can be part of the 19, laws are, are part of the big document of our country, the constitution, where it outlines what way we're gonna run our country. So that's a 1937 constitution. And uh, new Irish government laws, our other laws, uh, there's European laws, then there's new banking laws, how banking should operate. So you, sometimes you get laws passed down from the European Union, yeah. Um, so that's something to consider as well. And then sometimes there's laws brought in internationally or globally um, to say you can't do this or that. Uh, for example, war crimes, ethnic cleansing um, are some of the more serious. So local, local authorities can also pass laws and these are called bylaws. So if you go down to Rush Beach, um, you'll see posters up on the beach and it'll say, these are the bylaws. If you go into the Phoenix Park in Dublin, there'll, there'll be certain bylaws for how you use the Phoenix Park as well. Um, and they're just smaller laws. For example, you might see uh, written on the bylaws in Rush, Rush and no jet skis allowed. Um, in the Phoenix Park, you might see something written like you can't have barbecues in, in, the, in, in, the, in the Phoenix Park or feed the deer. 
um, feed the deer that is uh, stuff that's going to be dangerous to their health. Um, yeah, we'll come back to that one. We have laws and rules in this country for safety and peace and order and justice for all our citizens. Otherwise, chaos and anarchy might ensue in a country where you don't have good laws and good stability and good, go good governance. Um, you've got the International Court of Justice in The Hague in the Netherlands. So this is a, a world court um, where 15 judges from various countries will make decisions on whether uh, something in particular country or a particular uh, political leader might have done wrong and they, they, they hold people to account. Um, ties in with the United Nations. You know, the United Nations is an organization to help countries work together. Okay, so moving forward, we have types of law. We have civil law, and that includes um, when relationships break down, divorce, etc. Employment law, when there's problems with your boss or there's a problem with your employee, you might go to the courts. When there's a problem with buying and selling of goods, say online or in a shop, you need laws for that. When you're signing up for different contracts for, say, buying a house or buying a particular big item, sometimes you need a written contract. Sometimes it's verbal contracts, and uh, not for houses because that's complex. So that have to be a document associated with that. And then you have criminal law. So that's people who commit crimes, could be murder or dangerous, careless driving, or guard and make a book of evidence and send this on to DT DPP, that's the Director of Public Prosecutions, and it can be court trials. Yeah, uh, okay. Moving on. Examples then of civil law, and then on the left we have criminal law. So if you're problem uh, in the courts for civil law, and we mentioned that was all sorts of consumer, labor, employee issues, etc. You'd start with the, the district court, uh, cert, you move on to circuit court, high court, and the Supreme Court. Uh, you'd also have a court underneath there that's not there. It's called a small claims court. And that's for, for a small court to deal with claims less than 2,000 euro for maybe consumer law that you're working off, buying something in a shop that didn't work out or you, or you bought something online that didn't work out. And uh, it's a good service. It's online. It's cheap and quick and uh, yeah, works well for Ireland. Okay, so then on the criminal side, you have the district court circuit. So it's similar to the civil. Um, but obviously it's be working on, on different things. And then you've got the Central Criminal Court, Court of Criminal Appeal. That means if a uh, criminal, um, obviously not a criminal until they're, they're tried and, and all the evidence against them, they have a chance to appeal that decision if they've witnesses and evidence support their claims. And then go all the way to the Supreme Court, which is the most powerful uh, court in the land. If it's due to terrorist activities, there's a special court called the Special Criminal Court. And the reason they set up that was so that uh, people in the jury couldn't be influenced uh, in a negative way. And then you've got the Children's Court, which is kind of separate to all those to try and help uh, deal with some uh, child issues in relation to law. Okay, so our courts then, the Children's Court then, for under 60, people of uh, under 16 years of age, um, it's usually conducted with the use of a video camera in the room um, to make sure uh, everyone's being fair on children in the court. Uh, no public jury and no media are allowed into the uh, courtroom. Yeah? So the district court then is a court where there's no jury. You know, the jury are a group of people from the public that sit at the side of, of, of when, when a decision is being made against a, a person. Uh, they'll have a say and they'll have a vote to see whether that person should be convicted of a crime or, or not. Um, so in the case of the district court, there's no jury. Uh, and for minor offences, uh, it's usually for minor offences, uh, it might be where the judge decides maybe a fine and imprisonment is necessary. And he doesn't need a jury to, to decide that. And it's usually for 12 months max and usually a, a fine of, of €6,000. Uh, for certain particular things, yeah. The circuit court then, yes, the jury, uh, in other words, yes means there, yes, there is a jury uh, within this circuit court, and that jury will decide if the person was innocent or guilty. And if that defendant, that person is trying to defend their honor and their name, feels that they're not guilty, they can appeal uh, this to the district court, D stands for district. So then you've got the central criminal court, again, a higher court, Yes, as a jury as part of this for more serious cases, 
and more serious criminal cases. Um, and again, they can appeal to a court of, which means they can uh, defend themselves on a higher court if, if they've got you know, enough evidence, enough witnesses to be able to support that. Um, and then you've got three judges uh, in, in, in this case for appeals. And you've got a thing called a special criminal court, so that's for terrorism and gangland crime, uh, where they feel that, that the, the jury would be intimidated so they don't have a jury in that court, they just have three judges to try and decide whether the group of people or person is guilty or not. Then you've got the high court that appeals can, can be no jury or jury depending on the judge, judge's decision. So here the judge decides whether, um, whether a jury is needed or not. And decisions here then become case law. And then you've got the Supreme Court. This is where you've got five judges and no jury. And our new government laws following the Constitution. So if there's a major government law that uh, needs further consideration. Um, and there's uproar in the country, it's a pretty major deal. Maybe it's something to do with uh, abortion or maybe it's something to do with new divorce laws. Maybe something to do with changing something major in our constitution um, where it's the big protests and what have you. And then they'll, they'll bring it all the way to this court and, and try and uh, get a resolution. Uh, okay. so. The next slide, law and people. So you've got a solicitor, and I won't go through this in too much detail because we went through bit of this already. So your solicitor, you'll see them, uh, if you walk down main streets of towns, you'll see solicitor's offices. And they deal with things like making wills for people. Um, they do a lot of, uh, a lot of different legal uh, matters. And um, you can go to them first, they're kind of first in the chain of, if you were to get in, uh, into trouble with something that you'd, you'd employ a solicitor. A barrister is more, serious it's kind of person the person usually has the wig on in the court and he deals with more complex cases etc if they're actually going into the court and they have to stand in court a lot of things can be sorted out by the solicitor without going to court um depending on the seriousness of the issue then in a jury you usually have 12 people selected randomly from the public and they help make decisions on whether the person's uh, guilty or not then you've got a judge that's in charge of the courts You've got a clerk, clerk and court registrar. Uh, they record the judge's decisions. They swear in the jury. In other words, they, they bring the uh, jury in and, and, and make sure the jury are, are correct and, and what have you. And give people uh, the oath. So, you know, the person that's uh, maybe defend themselves, that they have to uh, put their hand on the Bible and say, yes, I'm telling the truth about whatever it is they need to talk about. Then you've got a recorder. And stenographer, and these take notes on everything that is said in the trial. The record is called a transcript that the person that's uh, writing down uh, what's been said uh, by either side in the, in the court. So there's a record there of everything that was said. Then we've got a tip staff or usher, and they make all the announcements, uh, all standards when uh, the judge is ready to proceed. That person, uh, the tip staff or usher, will put people into their seats and help direct them and also make announcements uh, that need to be need to be made in the court. Okay, so there's an example of a group of uh, barristers and, uh, and legal people, yeah. Um, okay, so more people. So you've got a defendant or the accused. In other words, the defendant is defending their name and they're saying they're instant. The accused is the person that, that, that's been accused of a particular crime or, or civil law problem. You're innocent in, in a lot of courts around the world now. You're innocent until you're proven guilty. Uh, so it's, the onus is on the, on the person prosecuting to prove that you're guilty. Um, the applicant, that's the person who took the, 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 the other person to court. So you can apply to take someone to court. If you're unhappy with something, you feel justice hasn't been done. And then you've got a prosecutor. If the law is broken, it's the person who prosecutes the other person. Sometimes the state can prosecute uh, people, particular companies, particular big institutions and what have you as well. Um, Garda can be present in court to give uh, their testimony or give their ideas of what happened or didn't happen. And they have witnesses, again, they can be brought in to say what happened or what didn't happen in a situation. And then the general public, um, and I can go in and watch the court sometimes. So you have a jury that is the public, public members, but you can also get people just allowed just to walk into certain courts I can just watch what's going on to make sure what's going on is fair or just from a point of view they're just interested to see what's going on okay so on Garda Shia Khan and the prisons 
They're an unarmed force. Uh, their headquarters are in the Phoenix Park. Their missions are to protect people, protect the community, and protect government state. Guard reserves volunteer to help, and community uh, people get involved to help the guards too. Prisons are there to punish, but also to rehabilitate, which means to try and get people back on the right track. Uh, there's also a central mental uh, hospital for people with serious uh, mental illnesses that have maybe committed a serious crime. Uh, and yeah. So young people uh, and law. So from six, you must uh, attend school. Seven to 14 is the age of criminality, uh, criminal responsibility in Ireland. And at 12, you can be held in the Garda station. At 14 years of age, you can do light work. And at district court, if a problem arises with, with that. Um, at 15, you can do part-time work only. And at 16, you can legally leave schools if the parents and school allow. Uh, okay, so young people's laws then. At 16, you can get a motorbike or tractor, a tractor's license with the permission, obviously, of your parents again. And you can get married again with the parents' consent. So can, you can join a trade union, a political party um, also. Um, you can't run for to be a politician till you're 18. At 17, you can get a, a professional license for a car and you can hold a private pilot's license. So at that age, you can even uh, have a private pilot to, drive, to fly a plane. You can join the army or the, the air force. At 18, uh, you're no longer considered a child. Um, you can vote and you can buy a house. Okay, so the National Employment Rights Authority um, for under 16 year olds. So the max work is 40 hours per week, but you're not allowed to work late nights. Um, your boss would have to give you 30 minute breaks for every four hours work that you do. And every 24 hours, you are entitled to 14 hours off. They're your rights. And anyone who's breaking those laws can be brought to court about it. You're also entitled to two days off per week. So as you can see, it'll be very hard for an employer to get anywhere, anywhere near the, the 40 uh, hours uh, a week. So you, in other words, you'd be working way less than that. Uh, it'd be a real small part-time job um, at that age. Okay, so moving on. That's an example of some of the prisons in, in Ireland. Um, yeah, and that's Mountjoy uh, Prison. Okay, so consumer law. So the 1980 sale of goods. This is there's laws for various different things. So these laws here are for people buying goods. Okay, so you and I buying goods. If something goes wrong, we need a law to protect us. That's the main law in Ireland. is called the 1980 Supply of uh, Goods and Services Act. So if someone sells as a service, there should be an order. It's a typo. Um, there should be something there to protect us. Um, and there is, these laws protect us. So it tells us that if we get a good or a service that's not of good quality, it doesn't match what they said it would do, it doesn't match the sample of, say, a piece of carpet, you got a sample, the next thing, it, the wrong carpet gets delivered back to your house. Well, that's wrong, that can't happen either. It must be fit for the purpose intended. So if it says it does a certain thing, it should do it. And it must be of uh, a quality and, and a, a certain quality of standards. So if you have a tradesman that comes in and does a bad job uh, on something that you asked them to do, that's not uh, of, of the, and it's not the correct uh, standard of quality, well, you can uh, take them to the courts as well using this law, the 1980 Act. There's also um, consumer information laws and uh, the 1978 one stated that uh, companies can't do false and misleading ads. You also have a, a, an organization here called the Ombudsman. An Ombudsman is usually an independent body keeping an eye on different organizations to make sure they're doing things correctly. And it can include government organizations, states in other words for government. So the Consumer Association of Ireland is a group or an organization actually help protect the rights of consumers and help inform them what their rights are. Um, and you have a director of consumer affairs they're also working to protect our rights so the companies don't take advantage of us and are selling us stuff. So a really important act here is the Consumer Protection Act of 2007. Again, an Irish act to help protect consumers. So we're entitled to have fair and accurate uh, trade descriptions, um, 
company shouldn't give us false ad adverts uh, about services or prices or previous prices. The Act appoints the national, that's short for NCA, that's a big agency in Ireland that also protects us. So as you can see, we're a robust country for actually trying to help uh, put in laws there to help protect you and I when we're buying things. Um, all adverts must be legal, honest and fair. All communications to promote uh, the goods are covered by the Act, including uh, advertisements, etc. Okay, moving on. So these are different ombudsmen. I said that they're independent organizations that help keep an eye to make sure uh, different organizations within even the state, within uh, government, are doing things correctly. So there's an ombudsman for the guard to make sure they're doing their job right. There's an ombudsman for children to make sure that uh, children are being treated right in different organizations. There's the National Consumer Agency, or the NCA, that makes sure that consumers, people buying stuff, aren't treated unfairly. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the presentation. Um, again, if you've got questions, you have my email and you have Schoology. Um, you also have the textbook to refer back to, to have a look at particular sections if you feel you need more information or further uh, explanations on. Now, if you can answer these questions, you're doing well. So, for example, where do laws come from? And again, put these into your, uh, your Google Slideshow summary presentations. Again, you have a lot less work to do if you work in groups of four. Uh, you don't have to. If you want to do it on your own, that's fine, but you're going to have more work to do. Whereas if you work in groups of four, you could divide it by four most of the work. So anyway, where do laws come from? You need to be able to answer that. Maybe we talked about the British kings, et cetera, et cetera. Describe the difference between civil and criminal law. Remember we mentioned criminal, theft, and, 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 and murder, et cetera, and civil being a little bit different to that. So look back up the slides and you should get the answer for that. What are the two most common types of punishment used in Ireland? Again, look back up, we've covered that. What is the name of the Irish Police Force? That's an easy one. Name the eight courts in Ireland. Again, they're on a the list there in one of the slides. In which courts would you always find a jury? Again, remember that slide where I said, some of these courts have a jury, some of them don't have a jury, some of them just have judges. So try and figure out which ones have a jury, which ones don't. What are war crimes? I mentioned that at the very start of the presentation. Explain the work of the four person of the jury. Don't worry too much about that. If you can find that in the book, great, write it down, yeah. Name three things that a judge does in, in court. Again, go to the book, see, and think about three things that the judge does in court, okay? It's fairly straightforward to see it in the book. Um, okay, what is the difference between a solicitor and a barrister? Again, we were saying the solicitor deals with, he's kind of the first person that you'd meet when you have a legal problem. The barrister is the person that goes with you if you had to go into a courtroom. Yeah, he's the person who wears, or she is the person who wears the, the wigs. And a list of five jobs done by the guardie, well, you should be able to make that up yourself, even if we haven't covered five. It's fairly straightforward to think what the guardie do. And if you're 16 years of age, what rights do you have in law? That was dealt in detail above. And what happens in the small claims court? Again, remember we said it was for, it's very cheap to enter into that court. It's for things less than 2,000 euro. And it's uh, one of the smaller courts in Ireland for dealing with minor issues, uh, particularly in, in civil law. Okay, describe the job of the ombudsman. We had different types of ombudsmen. We, said, we were saying they were independent uh, organizations to keep an eye on different um, organizations within uh, Ireland. Yeah, and we dealt with a few of them above. Who publishes the Consumer Choice magazine? Well, you can guess that it's going to be have to be either the National Consumer Agency or the Consumer Association of Ireland. So have a think about that. And uh, you're not going to be far wrong with either of them because they probably both do a bit on it anyway, because they're both uh, interested in promoting the rights of, of the consumer. Okay, Shin Shin, thanks for your attention and uh, keep safe.